Hey guys, so I decided that I drive to school 45 minutes every day, just sitting here, not really doing anything. So I came up with a genius plan to talk through it, because, you know, I talk to myself anyway, why not record it like I used to? Um, so some frequently, I'm assuming frequently asked questions, um, Will I be doing this often? Answer, yes, I will be. I will... I don't really know how long it will take me to record, edit, shit like that. So, I it might be every day. I doubt it'll be every day because of uni and work and everything like that. So, maybe once or twice a week. I really know about that. Second... Assuming frequently asked question. What about your other vlogs that you haven't done in decades? Not really decades, but exaggerating. They're coming back too. Because I recently bought a Canon 600D Nifty 50 lens that has the fucking orgasmic depth of field. And I also bought... Tripod, obviously. But I also bought a fucking studio set. Backdrops, soft boxes, bolts. It, it, it's going to be sick, guys. And with those ones as well, I'm going to be sticking to a schedule. Because that's what happened with my last videos. I didn't stick to a schedule, and then I just fell behind, and then I thought, well, fuck it. It's kind of like me, and then when I said I'll be writing my diary every, every night, that only lasted about a week. Yeah, I'm not really too good with these sort of things. So, vlogs, I am planning, don't hold me to this because I'm like at how long it will edit and with assessments and everything, while I work out the kinks to the schedule, it will be hopefully record on Saturday or Sunday, then upload Sunday or Monday. That's why I'm planning myself like a couple of days just in case something happens, that way I can do it the next day. So... Yeah, I'm actually really excited about that. Um, the reason why I can't do one of these every day, well, is because the main reason why I'm going out to uni is because I have uni work, obviously. So, yeah, I'm going to UC, doing a Bachelor of Media Arts in Production with major in Indigenous Studies. Try saying that six times. Special in media arts and production with a major in indigenous studies. Special in media arts and production with a major in indigenous studies. Special in media arts and production with a major in indigenous studies. media arts and production with a major in indigenous studies. Special in media arts with fuck. Special in media arts production with a major. I can't, I can't say it once now. <laughs> Bachelor of Media Arts and Production with a major in Indigenous Studies. Bachelor of Media Arts and Production with a major in Indigenous Studies. Bachelor of Media Arts and Production with a ma major... Ah. Fuck. Leave me a video response if you can do it. I, I want to see if someone can say that six times. A Bachelor of Media Arts and Production with a major in Indigenous Studies. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be waiting for that. I, um... It's a three-year course, so this is my first year. I decided I didn't want to have a gap year, because I know if I'm not doing something, I will procrastinate the hell out of it, and I'll end up never going. I I know that. I know myself. If I had a gap year, I will just keep working in retail and never really do anything. Plus, I really... If I'm not doing something, I just feel like... I'm going around in circles. Like, it was okay during school because, like, I was going through a progression. I'm going to school. I'm going to finish school at some point. But if I'm just working in retail, I'm not really working towards anything. I'm just making money to survive, which, yeah, I need money to survive. But at the same point, like, I'm not doing anything. That's another reason why I didn't take a gap year. Like, other people take gap years to get money to do that, and that's great, because, well, I suppose they can trust themselves to go back after the first year. But, like, I hear so many people that just take a gap year and then never, ever do it. I had two offers. 
I had an offer at ANU and UC. Oh, come on. And at ANU, I had to have an interview with like a hundred other students, and that was only on the first day. And it was, even though it was a media production, uh, media interview, it was still technically art. So they had me do a live drawing, you know, with an easel and charcoal and everything, and I can't draw for shit, guys. I honestly can't. So, like, and then I was thinking, well, how am I going to show them that I'm worth it when, A, I can't draw for shit, and I obviously want me to draw. So I got really inventive. Using the live images, I, I could have done a naked woman. That line was too long. So... I did, like, props from the drama department or something. Like, there was skulls and miniature houses. So, what I actually did was I made a storyboard, an ad, for a new. And I was quite proud of myself with that, too, because, um, you know, personally, I thought it made me look like I can get an idea really quickly, I can articulate it, it was good, it was good, it was good. Um, met, met some friends there, because I haven't gone in you I haven't talked to them, never. So, went, went up to the building where the interview was, it was in the media building, which, strangely enough, is the same place as the music department. Now, the music department likes to play their music loud, good for them, but from a film standpoint, You don't want loud music coming from behind you. And it was only a small building, too. So I doubt that they had a full-size studio. They wouldn't show me around to see see everything, so I wasn't too sure. But anyway, I went into my interview, and everyone else that went for the film had a folio, like a big book, where they showed the interviewers, everything like that, and I thought, oh, shit, I don't have one of those, because um, I made a website, I made um, dylanbigdaddy.wix.com forward slash portfolio, because movies, unless you get a flip book, how the fuck are you going to show that? You can't, you can't, (laughs) so I was kind of getting concerned with myself, and they let me use one of their big computers, and I loaded the URL, and they were impressed by that. But, because the, they said I was the only person to do that, which is good, and then they asked me to show them one of my the, my most impressive video. I showed them writer's block. That's right, I showed them writer's block, my drama one. Because somehow I think when a blind man goes to war, I'll be linking all these in the screen somewhere. I, show, I showed them writer's block, because I really tried for storytelling, and I I was getting really inventive because I didn't have any dialogue. So I really, really like that one. However, if I'm trying to impress someone, like just someone casually, I will show them my Ghost Presets fan-made video. I mean, yes, everyone in the video um, can't lip-sync for shit. I mean, thank you guys for being in it, but, I mean, one, you can't lip speak for shit. Two, you can't sway in time. Some people actually pointed out that the swaying out of time really worked for it. It was kind of like this one person just out of sync for it. Which is fair enough. I kind of like how they did that. I pulled them out at five minutes' notice. One lunchtime. And Mark had never heard the song before. So, given all those points, it's pretty... Pretty impressive work, I I must say myself. But I wasn't going to show them that one because out of sync, lip sync, and everything like that. But I, I just went on a huge tangent. Um, with the live drawing, I I had this huge piece of paper, huge. Not only one, like a couple of them. They ended up having a conversation about like um because I uh, writer's block half of it was actually filmed on my iPad because my tiny little handheld camera that pretty much all my other videos are filmed on, this is filmed on my phone, actually shoots better than my, than that camera, 
which I filmed all my other vlogs and everything beforehand. It was a good little camera, but it's fuck, fucking shit now. Like, I had to replace the battery, and that was more than the fucking camera. And so, that's another reason why I haven't been making vlogs or videos, because that the camera just annoys me. And because I, I only had, like, a little tripod, and then I had to find a place where I can mount that little tripod. And then I have to find a place where there's more light and everything like that. It's horrible. But, yeah, so they had started going into a conversation with, like, how everything's different. Like, people can, with GoPros now, shooting 4K and Google and YouTube now support 4K and everything like that. So, I don't think the iPad thing was too much of a bother to them. Well, I still got accepted, didn't I? So, <laughs> obviously not. But, then... Yeah, they said thank you, and they sent me on my way. But then I was like, um, did you want to see my live drawing? You know, the thing that pretty much I had to do to get in here. And they said, no, not really. Yeah, if you want to. And I showed them. I fucking showed them. Because you know what? I worked hard on that. As I said, that was fucking inventive shit. So I was like, nah, bitches, here, look at my crap. I'm going very high <laughs> <laughs> Very high pitched right now. Oh, look at that fucker. Get in your own lane. Where the hell is your fuel gauge? Uh, not fuel gauge, um, fuel cap. It's fucking off, off its chops. Right, so I showed them the live drawing. And they just really didn't care, really. Like, they obviously knew that it was a media course and you didn't have to draw for it. But I don't know. I, I like to think that they were impressed with my inventiveness. Inventiveness. What the fuck is that word, Dylan? Inventive. My cleverness. Yeah, see, I worked around that one. And then I had had a because I got through UC in the principal's rec, and I got a new mainstream, which you know is cool. Um. I'm pretty sure I, I would have gotten um, UC mainstream as well, but it's nice to know that I, I have that principal's rec. My principal's rec recommendation for those who don't know is um, if you don't get a high enough score in your high school certificate, uh, you, that it's pretty much a big backdoor where the principal of your high school says, hey, look at this guy, he's pretty, pretty fucking awesome, uh, you should give him a spot. And I got that through that with UC. But because I had both an offer from, from Canberra and ANU, uh, I was tossing between them. And I said, and I went out to the Ngunnawal Centre, which is the Indigenous Centre out of UC, met Jess, who's a lovely, lovely woman, uh, asked if I can get a tour. And we had a tour, like personal tour, because they, they have tours, but it's mostly for big groups that you can't really see or do much there. I asked again, I go see the media building. And it was brilliant. They have a full size TV studio and oh so much cameras and media. Oh they have they have forty thousand dollar cameras for me to play with. I mean fuck yeah. Oh it was so great. And as soon as I walked out of that building I said to Jess, sign me the fuck up. In fact, she was so impressed that she was considering changing her course, which was um, psychology, to do media, just so she could play with all those toys. And to be perfectly honest, I wouldn't blame her. Is this guy going to let me in? Fuck! The fuck are you doing? No! No! Oh, fucking go around me. Oh, now this cunt. Oh! What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, you let me in. Oh, shit, this is tight. That's what he said. Oh, where are you? Still behind me. Oh, fucking road. Oh, shit. I forgot about the roadworks. Oh. So all in all, I went to UC. This is, what, this is what has been in my bag for a weekend. Is it still good? I don't know if you can see that. There's a fucking big clown up there. I would move you, but I can't see the screen. 
So I don't know if I'll put you back where you're meant to be. They're either in the highway here. So they're going to make it like double lane each side, I'm pretty sure. Let's go, I'll go all the way up to Majura. Which would be good. So they have to sit here for a while. I will go through the city. But I'm just too scared to go through the city. I know, it doesn't take me long to get through here. But it, it's just the inconvenience, you know. Plus, I think now that I'm a camera dryer, driver. I'm a camera dryer. Mm-hmm. Now that, now that I'm a camera dryer, I get really aggressive. So that might be fun for you guys. If <laughs> someone cuts me off, you'll fucking know about it. You will fucking know about it if someone cuts me the fuck off. On the road again. This is Limestone Avenue, or close to it. And there is a prostitute that walks up here. And I've heard stories from, like, Mum and Ian and pretty much everyone who drives in Cameron knows about her. She's called Limestone Lizzie. A story has it that the original Limestone Lizzie died. And the one that's still walking the streets today is her daughter, her sister, or just some random chick that decided to take it name I like to, for, for, to think of the first two as, you know, kind of heartwarming, prostitute, pretty woman sort of thing. But anyway, Limestone Lizzie is the fuggiest, fuggiest, uh, fucking ugliest prostitute you can think of. Like, she's wrinkly and uh, druggy and, like, from a distance like a kilometer away she looks not bad like long hair and everything like that oh as soon as you get oh my god that's the cut that wouldn't let me in huh. um but when you get close you think fucking hell he won't want to pay to stick their cock in that and obviously they do otherwise she wouldn't be walking around here would she and you can also see her walking back, so she must be kept busy, that limestone Lizzie. So why don't you make a song of that? That lime's good. Getting fucking tired of driving all the way out here and then all the way back every single day. Hopefully this will keep me sane. <laughs> because I kind of just sit here and I normally listen to Triple J because they're awesome. Because I go to uni at different times every day, it's not the same host. Like, if I went, like, 8 o'clock every morning, then I would have Tom and Alex. But on Wednesdays, school starts at 2, so I'm not... I, I leave home at 1. And you can't have a breakfast show at 1. That would be insane. So, and then on Tuesday and then Friday, I go at different times, and it's different. So I can't really get used to one center. So, like, the music's good and everything. That's not bad. I don't know what it is, but there are so many high schools right on, on the edge of a highway, and they don't have fences. Carabao High School, by my high school, where that kid got stabbed, is, is on a little street. Definitely not a main street, but they still had fucking six-foot fences. No, not six foot, seven foot fences, because he was taller than me. But here they don't. Like, what is it with Carabao kids? Or is it New South Wales kids? Because quite, Queen High School has them as well. I'm pretty sure every single school that I've seen in New South Wales has them. Like, some primary schools around the ACT have little fences, but no fucking seven foot spikes. They have spikes on the top of them. And, like, a lot of kids reckon it's like prison. I know. It, it's just one of those weird trust things that the ACT do differently. And I think that would be a nice segue. I'd like to go on news.com.au, pick out a headline, read up on it, talk about it. There's a guess I want out of things to talk about here. The headline was Julia Gillard and the new education reform. So pretty much, if you don't know about it, it's where Julia Gillard was saying that pretty much the whole reason she became a politician was for education. And with the Gonski report that said, oh, schools need more money. Pretty much. She's proposed that 
instead of giving schools lump sums, don't in the comment section, she's probably going to rip on me for saying lump sum because there's a whole heap of variables that go like that, but it's essentially lump sum. They give schools so much money per student and then so much more money per student if the student is indigenous, disabled, disabled from low socioeconomic uh, background. I don't know what socioeconomic meant the other day. <laughs> Uni, I tell you. Um, background, a whole heap. If they're like in a rural area and things like that, which, you know, sounds great because now they can cater to each and every student. But, like, I think it was $16 billion to do this, and they want the state governments to chip in a third of it, which is kind of reasonable, but unless every state agrees to it, then there's not, not much point. Um, but some, some of the things that they were saying that were wrong with it was because... Like, this money has to come from somewhere. It has to come from um, pensioners. They've worked around pensions. And university students. They've taken so much money from universities to fund this thing. Which, you know, four years ago, I probably wouldn't have had a problem about it. But now I'm fucking in uni. Give me that fucking money. <laughs> this is one thing I picked up on. It's, what if schools start having a monopoly of students? Like if, okay, you, you have a town, right? Let's say medium, small size, yes, yeah, small size city. There's two schools. And one of them has uh, 10,000 students. The other has 5,000 students. The one with 10,000 students would get more funding. They'll get twi twice as much funding, assuming that all the variables are the same. The same, same city and probably from the same sort of backgrounds. They'll get twice as much funding to do different programs and things with the kids. Well, the $5,000 school has, well, half what... $10,000 school. So, they can't do as much programs. So when parents say, what choose what school they want their kids to go to, um, they look at A, the programs and other things and how well the school's kept up. And of course, the $10,000 school would have better funding to fund the programs. Therefore, more students would go to the $10,000 school, wouldn't they? Making the 10... What the fuck's going on up here? Making the $10,000 school more preferable. And what the fuck is happening? Why? Is there anybody in front of you, fucktard? Better be. Or a fucking granny? No. No, there fucking isn't. What the... F I think he's fucking dicking with me. I think he's dicking with me. Fucking dick. Um, so the $10,000 school will have more students to fund more things, while the $5,000 students will get less and less students. What the fuck are you doing? Seriously! It's not like I'm tailgating you! Why are you just hammering, hammering on your brakes? We'll have less students to fund things and then eventually go bankrupt. This is probably an extreme case, but you can see where I'm coming from. Julia Gillard hasn't really been talking with the state governments much. It's pretty much just been this hey how are you sort of thing. Because um, some of the state premiers have been saying that they, they're getting most of the information through the media. Okay, very around this kid. And then this can't... Yeah, so state premiers have been uh, getting information through media and not talking with the state, with the uh, government, which is a scary thing, and other people have been saying that Julia Gillard is pretty much throwing in as many policies as she can to make a difference before she eventually gets kicked out. 
they shouldn't really listen to him. Because, um, no one voted for Julie Gillard. That's the thing. Like, she's better than Abbott. Totally better than Abbott. But, people voted in 2007 for Kevin. They voted for Kevin. And he got re-elected, I'm pretty sure. And then they got sick of Kevin. And this is all in their party. The Labour party decided to put Julia in charge. And then they just had recently had a had a spit around that. Dublin's weird. Like when I went to Canberra to to do that thing, I know big field trip. Oh, why is everybody going so slow today? Fuck, man. Yeah, when I went to Canberra for uh, work experience in the government. And we watched Question Time. It was like a bunch of kindergartens. Just saying, Oh, miss, miss. He, he's mean to me. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. The motherfucking leader of, of Labour Parliament is being stupid. Fucking stupid. It's pretty much how that goes. 